What is going on? This is BQ. It is the Impact Lounge. And I do this for the Impact Wrestling fans. You already know this. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it. And let's talk Impact Wrestling Knockouts Tournament. So you may have seen below by now, if you're, if you're uh, one of the quick ones, I've disabled the comments for this video. Why have I done that? Because I'm going to talk some thoughts on the uh, Knockouts Tournament. And to keep it spoiler free, because I've said it on a couple other videos, someone has already spoiled this for me in the comments. That's one of the difficult things about running one of these channels, trying to monitor the spoilers. I end up getting them myself and kind of sucks, kind of disrespectful to the guy who's busting his ass to bring you guys this channel. Anyway, let's talk knockouts. I'm kind of excited for this. I shouldn't say I'm kind of, I'm, I'm very excited for this. I would have liked to see a tournament tournament, but this is something that they did. Um, this is kind of different. It's the triple threat format. They did this in the Global Force Wrestling Amped Anthology, and I thought it was kind of cool. Watching that anthology, I think was one of the things that was cool to me was that the Global Championship was a standard format, and then the, the uh, Women's Championship was triple threat, and... Uh, they did something different, I want to say, for the tag team and uh, next gen as well. But that's that's neither here nor there. So I kind of like the idea. I think what kind of sucks is that we, we, we're dealing with injured knockouts. Some of the knockouts not being in the country. And this would have been a good, uh, good opportunity to get everybody on board. Even if they were there to job, you know. So you could have found some work for MJ, for example. I've said this before as well. They have a hard time breaking in new knockouts. They have to have a name. You have a name, they know what to do with you. You don't have a name, they have no idea what to do with you. A tournament's a great idea and a great way to factor some of these new women in. But that's not what they're doing. They're going to do this triple threat format. There's six knockouts total. And this is something that I found really weird. They showed the bracket really, really quick on this past episode of Impact. One side, you have Laurel Van Ness, Casey Spinelli, and Madison Rain. And then on the other side, you have Sienna, Allie, and Rosemary. So basically, you have the three favorites to win this thing on one side of the bracket. And then you have the three underdogs on the other side of the bracket. Makes zero sense to me as a fan watching this thing. I would uh, I would have definitely done that a little bit different. I wanna get into Madison Rain real quick. Some people are excited to see her back on TV. I am, I'm excited to see her back on. I wouldn't get too excited like this is her return to the company this is what I think happened, most likely. Taya was booked for Bound for Glory. Taya could not get in. Taya was most likely supposed to fill that Madison Rain slot in the tournament. She was obviously unavailable. They didn't have any other knockouts. Um, I mean, I, they have a couple other hiding behind backstage, but that's not the way they want to use them. Um, Madison Rain was most likely in country because she is married to John, Josh Matthews. She was available. They probably approached her and say, we need someone to fill this slot. Can you do it? Wrestlers always have their wrestling gear with them. She's in the match. So I wouldn't get too excited like we're going to see her long term. That is just, that's just my personal thing. I'm not reporting anything. I'm not you know saying anything as concrete. Just a personal opinion. I think that's what happened. I usually have a pretty good sense for these kind of things. So, with that being said, I find it kind of weird that they put the three favorites on one side, three underdogs on the other side. I would have done the brackets a little bit differently. This is the way they chose to do them. That's fine. The knock This needs to be the year of the knockouts. This set of tapings needs to be the tapings of the knockouts. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I was, I was saying this on the Impact Review a couple weeks ago 
they don't really have tag teams at the moment. The main event scene is very thin. It's it's right now a three person scene, and uh, it's going to be an awkward main event scene because I don't think anyone wants to see Johnny Impact versus Eli Drake again. And then I don't know how they book Eli Drake versus Alberto El Patron. So it's going to be interesting going forward. With this being said, this is the opportunity to have the knockouts. To have to, to make it about the knockouts. This set of tapings in this year. You want to get women's wrestling back? This is the time to do it. There's a rumor that the E is going to do a women's Royal Rumble this year. TNA has been doing the women's knockouts uh, gauntlet for years um, of course they're going to get no respect for that and no you know they're not going to get credit for it but that's still something kind of groundbreaking that's happening after they did the whole money in the bank thing the knockouts this year have to step up i'm not too concerned about them stepping up they'll come to they'll bring it it's creative it's management it's ownership what are you going to do to make the knockouts the number one division this is the first opportunity to do that. It's going to be really fun to watch these matches. And then we'll see who the new knockouts champion is. I think this tournament is going to really let us know who the company sees going forward as the faces. Um, and I don't mean face baby face dynamic. I mean the face of the division. And I'm not saying necessarily it has to be that winner. But on one side, if you have... Allie or Rosemary win, I think it's safe to say that's the baby face they see going forward. On the other side, you know, you got Casey. I, I don't see how Laurel doesn't win that match. It, but at the same time, it's interesting to see, is that the, the, the heel knockout they want going forward? Or do they want to keep rolling with Sienna? If they want to do it with Laurel, you got to tweak that gimmick a little bit. They're already starting to do it. You know, the way she's got the dress and the wrestling gear and everything. She's not in the, the wedding dress anymore, but she's still acting the same. So how are you going to tweak the Laurel gimmick? How are you going to tweak the Allie gimmick? If she's going to be your number one baby face um, or one and one A with Rosemary, you're going to have to tweak that a little bit. I'm not one of those people to say, oh, Allie knows how to wrestle. Stop acting like she doesn't. I'm not one of those people. I like the Allie gimmick. But they will have to tweak it. Rosemary, as I've said, has looked a little bit weak in, in the in the last couple months, ever since Slammiversary, really, in my opinion. I think so. I think this last half year has not gone well for her. So how how is she going to be booked going forward? And then is Sienna going to still be dominant? And then you've got Hanaya. You got to bring into the fold. I don't know if they're going to keep that as her name. And then there's Kira Hogan, which. I would imagine they're going to change her name. And I kind of see why they let MJ go. Because there's a lot of similar dynamics in the wrestling styles. And I think, you know, we, as far as we know, Alicia's with the company still. How are they going to book her? How much, you know, how much um, confidence do they have in Ava going forward? It's going to be a really interesting year. But it, it all starts with this tournament. The matches have to deliver. They have to, all three of them have to deliver. And then the, the set of tapings creatively, uh, the wrestling, everything has to be on point. And this has to be the year of the knockouts. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you soon.